Off the Wall was the coming of age album for Michael Jackson. Until its release, he'd never really been able to shake off his child star image. But his ambition and talent propelled him into making one of the standout albums of the 70s. Taking inspiration from the disco scene in New York, and with a team of collaborators that was a who's who of the hottest talent around, the album not only has great songs and performances, but it still sounds incredible too. So what are the secrets to this achievement? In this video I'm going to explore the process they undertook to make this classic album. Michael Jackson and Quincy Jones seem like natural collaborators with hindsight, and the success of the trilogy of records they produced is testament to how well it worked. But back in 1978, there was serious opposition from the record label to the idea of Quincy being the man to help Michael create a hit record. With Quincy's background being in jazz, they believe he wouldn't understand the broad appeal needed in order to create a pop record. Despite this kickback, Michael insisted that Quincy was the man, having worked with him on the soundtrack to the film The Wiz. Michael knew that Quincy brought a musical sophistication needed to elevate his sound to the next level, and Quincy knew how to deliver this, bringing in the best engineers and musicians around, and a pool of songs that, while great individually, could also work together to create a cohesive, solid album. Bruce Wedeen answered Quincy's call to be the engineer for the album, and also mix it. Bruce had worked with Quincy for a few years by this stage, and both had worked with Michael on The Wiz. Swedeen was known for his Akisonic recording process, which is a name he gave for his love of recording instruments in stereo and using natural room reflections to enhance the sonic qualities of a sound, even if they weren't originally recorded with microphones. An example of this is his method of recording synthesizers, whereby he play the direct sound out through a set of speakers and then blend in the ambient sound captured by the mics in the room. If you want to learn more about Bruce and Michael's work together, I have a video here that goes into more detail about his methods. As usual with the Michael Jackson record, hundreds of songs have been whittled down to just a few that were in contention. From the ballad She's Out of My Life, written by Tom Baylor, that was originally intended for Frank Sinatra, the mid-tempo jaunty number Girlfriend, written by Paul McCartney. Paul apparently wrote this specifically for Michael, despite doing a version on his Wings album London Town released a year earlier. I Can't Help It, written by Stevie Wonder and Suze Green, is an incredible song that definitely leans on the jazz pop side of things but remains completely at home on this album, among the more disco-orientated songs. This disco element was expertly overseen by songwriter Rod Temberton, who contributed three songs to the album. The story goes that when asked to write something for the album, he quickly wrote three songs, thinking they would just choose one if he was lucky. But instead, to his amazement, they wanted all three. The title track, Off The Wall, Rock With You and Burn This Disco Out. His guide melody can still be heard on the multi-tracks for Rock With You. Rod had previously enjoyed many hits with the band Heatwave, in particular Boogie Nights, which was a massive hit, and would have been a regular spin at Studio 54, where Michael had spent a lot of time in between filming The Wiz. Michael professed to have spent many nights there dancing and even just observing the disco phenomena at first hand. Michael himself had written three songs for the album, Don't Stop Till You Get Enough, Working Day and Night, and Get On The Floor. The demos for these songs were worked out at his Havenhurst home with his brother Randy, and the general approach to these songs quite well formed before the proper recording began, earning Michael a co-production credit. To help Michael with these arrangements, the incredible session keyboardist Greg Fillingaines was brought in. Greg actually came up with the bridge section on Don't Stop Till You Get Enough. He was also on hand to create anything from bass lines, lead lines and chords. Naturally, as it's the late 70s, the Fender Rhodes is featured heavily for chords and pad sounds. Synthesizers such as the Oberheim OB-8, which is featured on I Can't Help It, and the Mini Moog provided both lead and bass lines. Greg recalls working with Michael. He did something really sweet for me that I'll never forget. The running joke at the time that I was a famous keyboard player, but I didn't own a Rhodes of my own. After we finished the Destiny album, I was at home minding my own business, when the doorbell rang. A guy driving a white truck asked me, Are you Greg Fillingaines? I have something for you. He opened the truck and took out a giant case with a Rhodes suitcase model in it. Attached was a note from Michael. I knew you didn't have one of these, so I thought you'd like one. I still have that Rhodes, and I recently had it completely redone. It sounds amazing. Filling Gaines wasn't alone on synth duties. Michael Bodeker and Steve Pocaro were also part of the team helping to create and play the sounds. The bass on Don't Stop Till You Get Enough is actually credited to Lewis Johnson on the album sleeve. But when isolated, it definitely sounds like a synth, although the attack is quite bass guitar-like.
regardless of this debate, Lewis Johnson is featured prominently on the album, helping Wright get on the floor with Michael and providing bass playing that was coming straight from the disco funk world of his work with the brothers Johnson, and in particular their hit Stomp. The guitars in the album were played by Marlo Henderson, David Williams and Wah Wah Watson. The loose right hand funk style was an important contribution to the sound, as it's not only added important chord presence, but another source of rhythm and funk. Listen to the drums played by John Robinson, you definitely get a sense of rawness, and also how relatively dry they are, which is no surprise given it's the 70s, where punch and articulation was the name of the game. The initial rhythm tracks were recorded at the Alan Zent studio, before being completed at Westlake, and John recalls the sessions. I worked with Quincy Jones on the Rufus and Shaka Khan album Master Jam, after this, he asked me if I did outside sessions. I said, of course. So he had me come over and overdub drums for Girlfriend and it's the Falling in Love. After the session, he pushed the talkback mic down and asked, what are you doing Monday? I said, nothing. He said, would you like to come down and record the rest of the album? I said, absolutely, as I rejoiced. This is the first time I met Greg Phil and Gaines. We cut the song as a trio. When we finished the song, Greg was standing on his piano bench as we knew we'd just recorded a number one record. Interestingly, when asked if he remembered anything technical about the sessions, John recalls that Bruce asked him to play the kick as soft as possible and let the mic and pre's do all the work. This is quite interesting as the kick drum tone is full and defined in the mix, so this seems like wise direction. Looking at the sessions, it was recorded to a clip, but there's a really nice ebb and flow which is something you don't necessarily hear much these days when working with a DAW. The horn section was provided by Jerry Hayes Seawind Horn Group. The horn parts are all over the album, and again, like the guitar, contribute not only melodically but rhythmically to the groove. The playing is incredible, and coupled with the string section gives an amazing depth to the sound. Off the Wall has gone down in history as perhaps the last great disco record, and certainly an encapsulation of a sound and feel before the introduction of sequences and drum machines. The sonic balance of acoustic instruments played by incredible musicians, and the emerging synthesizers of the day, in my opinion, provide an incredible balance of textures that's hard to beat. 